But we don't even have to be silly with arguments like this because it tells us that this very servant would be beaten beyond recognition. Was Muhammad beaten beyond recognition? No. Did he die a violent death? No. Not only so, it says that he won't retaliate, that he'll lay down his life for those that oppose him. It even says that, that he won't even put out just a, a burning wick he won't put out. Muhammad, according to tradition, was a conqueror. He was, he was not the lamb that laid down his life. The servant is actually identified with Israel. Isaiah 49, 3, because he embodies the nation of Israel. Was Muhammad identified with Israel? No. Was he an Israelite? No. Did he embody the mission of Israel? No. His name is Muhammad. He is a lawgiver. And Isaiah 42 confirms he will bring the Gentiles, especially the Ishmaelites, into the knowledge of the true God, thus connecting it back to the great nation promise. As for the servant of the Lord that was referenced in Isaiah 42 and 49, that cannot possibly be Muhammad for many reasons. First, as widely recognized by biblical scholars, based on internal evidence, the servant described in Isaiah 42 is the same servant described as in Isaiah 49, which we just heard. He's also described in the 50th chapter and 52.13 through 53.12. So according to these passages, the servant is actually identified with Israel. Isaiah 49.3, because he embodies the nation of Israel. Was Muhammad identified with Israel? No. Was he an Israelite? No. Did he embody the mission of Israel? No. Did he have a primary mission, as Yeshua did, to go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, first and foremost, to regather them? No. Muhammad did not have that mission. Jesus did. But, but let's take this a little further. According to these prophecies, the servant would stand out a certain way. Would his message go as far as Kedar? Yeah, in other words, to distant lands. But if you go to 49, it says that it will go to Sinim, which according to traditional uh, lexicons was China. Maybe it's a prophecy about Confucius. I mean, it's using the same logic to find Muhammad in 42, because Kedar is mentioned. You might as well make the prophet into Confucius. But we don't even have to be silly with arguments like this, because it tells us that this very servant would be beaten beyond recognition. He would die a violent death. Was Muhammad beaten beyond recognition? No. Did he die a violent death? No. Not only so, it says that he won't retaliate, that he'll lay down his life for those that oppose him. It even says that, that he won't even put out just a, a burning wick he won't put out. Muhammad, according to tradition, was a conqueror. He was, he was not the lamb that laid down his life. He was not the one who died a violent death and rose from the dead. Yet according to these passages, Isaiah 42, Isaiah 49, Isaiah 50, Isaiah 52, 13 to 53, 12, these are descriptions of the servant. There's no ambiguity here whatsoever.